Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you a first look at this Grandstream GWN 7811P Layer 3 Ethernet switch. I want to thank Grandstream for sending this out to me to check out along with this pretty cool swag that I'm sporting. So the folks over at Grandstream, thank you much for all of this. Let's take a look at this. We'll unbox it. We'll take a look at the specs on the Grandstream product page and then we'll get it fired up and take a look at the user interface. I haven't opened this yet. We're gonna do this together. So let's go ahead and we'll do just a quick unboxing, nothing fancy today. So to start off, you have your Grandstream owner's manual. It's pretty substantial owner's manual. They do a great job with that. In the accessory section, you have your grounding wire, some wire management, plastic zip tie, and ring, your standard power cord, rack ears for mounting in a rack. There's also some uh, adhesive sticky feet in there, I guess in case you want to put it on a desk or tabletop, and then a little bag of screws. So that's all in the accessory area. Let's take a look at the actual switch itself. Okay, so here it is in all its glory. It's a pretty hefty, uh, well-built switch. On the back of the unit, there's a lot of ventilation for cooling. You have your power port. Then you do have your grounding lug here. On this side here, there's a lot more, again, ventilation for cooling and your screw holds for your rack ears. On this side here, Again, more ventilation, screw holes for rack gears, but then there's also a Kensington lock, I guess, uh, right in the center there in case you decide to just put it on a tabletop or desktop so it can't walk away very easily. And then there's the front of the unit. It does have, uh, where am I? Here we go. It does have your eight uh, one gig ethernet ports, and then it does have two SFP plus ports, a console port, and then there's a reset button there right next to the console port. Over on this side here, it does have the model information and the Grandstream branding. So before we get this fired up, let me just switch over to Grandstream's product page and we'll take a look at the specs. Okay, so we're on Grandstream's product page. This is their Switch product page. And you can see over the last couple of years, They've really come out with a full line of switches, layer two, layer two managed, unmanaged, layer three switches, aggregation switches. So we're gonna take a look here at the layer three product page. And this switch in particular is the 7811P. It comes in eight, 16 and 24 gigabit ethernet port configurations and either two or four 10 gig SFP plus ports. So this is the eight port model and it's got two SFP plus ports like we discussed, smart power control to support dynamic PoE and PoE plus allocation per port. And let's go ahead and take a closer look here. We'll download the actual data sheet and take a look at that. So again, gigabit ethernet ports, smart PoE. Let's take a look here. The GWN 7811P is the second column. The GWN 7811 is the non-POE version. So they both have eight gigabit ethernet ports, both have two SFP plus ports. Then all eight ports on the POE switch supply POE power, 30 watts maximum output power per port, a total of 120 watts for the switch supporting 802.3AF and AT. Here are your switching statistics, your routing statistics. It does static routing, dynamic routing, policy routing, multicast IGMP snooping, MLD snooping, MVR pending, it says. And then it does some QoS, DHCP server. There's security features built in your mounting options, your system LEDs, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, like I said, let me get this puppy connected with power and to the network, and then we'll be back and we'll take a look at the user interface. 
All right, so while the switch is booting up, there's a couple of things I want to follow up with as I was skimming through the manual. Earlier in the video, I referred to this piece right here. Hopefully you can see that. I called it wire management, but actually Grandstream refers to it as a power cord anti-trip brace. So it basically secures the power cord into place. In fact, let me show you real quick on the back of the unit here right next to the power port, there's a little hole for this. You just press it in place like that, and then you wrap the bracket around the power cord, and it prevents the power cord from accidentally being pulled out and losing power to the actual switch. So that's a pretty nice feature, and that's included in the package. I also mentioned that on the bottom of the unit, you have the information that has the individual password for this particular device. Well, Grandstream does that with all of their devices. And inside the box, they also include this little sticker here that you can place somewhere safe so you don't lose it. It also includes the MAC address and the actual device initial password. And then finally, I just want to cover how to log into the device. There's a couple of different methods. You could use the web UI, which we're gonna do in this video in the next segment. You could uh, log in using the actual management console port here on the front of the device. You can log in remotely using SSH, and you can also log in using gwn.cloud or GWN Manager. Uh, if you have an on-premise Linux machine. So anyway, that said, let's switch over now to the actual web UI. All right, so we're on the management page. Now, the address that came up for me on my DHCP server was 192.168.25.187. Of course, yours will vary on your network. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter the username and the default username is admin and we're gonna just paste in that initial password and say sign in. Usually Grandstream prompts you initially during the initial setup to change the password. I'm surprised it didn't do that, but typically that is a normal characteristic and I don't believe I've signed into this before. This is the first time I've had the switch here for a while but I have not signed in, so I'm not sure why I didn't get prompted for the password. But in any event, uh, we probably will go ahead and change that as we go through. Actually, let's just change that right now. So the current password is the default password, and then we'll just make it our typical lab password. Oh, we have to get a special character in there. So letters, numbers, and a special character. Okay, then again, let's go ahead and now we'll say save. And now we're looking at the overview here. You can see all the basic info here. This is your typical interface, your CPU usage, your memory usage, your device temperature here, that's in Celsius, uh, your PoE status, remaining power 120 watts, and there's none being used right now because I don't have anything plugged into the actual switch. Then you have your system events, emergencies, alerts, critical error, notifications. So I have some information down here. Look at the port info. Again, if you're familiar with Grandstream switches, this should look pretty familiar to you. Again, if you are using Grandstream switches, you'll notice that their numbering sequence is reverse of most manufacturers. Usually number one is up on the top and it goes one, two, three, four, but they do that in the reverse. Not sure why, but again, if you're familiar with Grandstream, you should be uh, comfortable with this at this point. We have our two SFP plus ports here and our eight gig ethernet ports here and our basic port information. If we click on the actual port itself, it just shows us the info or we pass over it actually. And let's go over to switching. And under switching, you have your basic port settings. You can go into your port. You can see the status is enabled. The link is up. Auto negotiating, it's connected at a gig. 
Jumbo Frames is 9216. We'll go into here and you can see that you can go valid range for Jumbo Frames is 1518 to 10,000. You can control flow control. You can enable it, disable it, set it to auto. Again, your speed, all your typical configuration for uh, your switch ports here. You get your flow statistics, port auto recovery, your link aggregation section, your MAC address tables, your VLAN section. So it does support VLANs. Here's your spanning tree section. Let's go down to IP. You got your VLAN IP interface. Again, very nice looking UI. Has a built in DHCP server, which is off by default. DHCP relay, your ARP table, neighbor discovery, DNS. It's a fully loaded featured switch. Here's your multicast section IGPM snooping, MLD snooping. Really packed a lot in this switch. What I have to do is find out the suggested retail on this. Here's your routing, you got your routing table, your static routes, IP version 6 static routes, OSPF, area settings interface, NBMA neighbor, neighbor info, database info. Lots of cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff that I also have to get up on. Here's PoE, here's our global Total power, 120 watts. Reserved power, 20 watts. Configured power right now is zero. Supports 802.3 AF and AT. And here's the individual PoE information for the individual interfaces. Here's your QoS information. You got port priority, priority mapping, queue scheduling, queue shaping, rate limit. Now, for a lot of the things that I'm doing, I probably will not utilize a lot of these features, but it's it's good to know that they're all here on the security, storm control, port security, port isolation, ACLs, IP source guard, anti-attack, lots of stuff to investigate. Under maintenance, here's where you would upgrade it. Now, Grandstream recently changed this. It's no longer goes out to just, just, just this central general firmware server. You actually now have to go to Grandstream's website and get the actual link to the particular firmware for the particular device. Diagnostics. There's your ping tool, your trace route tool, all built in mirroring fiber module, copper test, which is really cool. One click debugging, you do your backup and restore. You can do a factory reset, SNMP support, LLDP, and under system, you have your basic settings, access control, user management, time policies. So, again, a really full featured switch. I need to check the MSRP. Let me see if I can find that. Let's go back to the computer. Let's go to see if VoIP supply has it. All right, let's see. Grand stream GWN 7811 P. There you go. So for $199, you get a solid enterprise grade layer three managed network switch supporting 120 watts of PoE power overall, 30 watts max per switch. $199 for this particular switch, I think, is a bargain. So let me know what you think. First look of at the GWN 7811P layer three ethernet switch. Uh, put your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Are you using Grandstream products in your environment? Again, let me know down below. If you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.